hidden beneath the 405 and 105 interchange, down on Imperial Boulevard, away from the mainstream and all your normal shops. There's a great little spot that not a lot of people know about. This is where we chose to meet up with Matt Florentino and catch up on what's new. Yeah, one time I got the El Pastor with just all El Pastor. And it's not as good not having the carnitas. You got to be able to balance it out. You got to go back and forth with it's the flavors. All, for me. all right, guys. We're here at uh, Tacos El Tamix, and uh, we're having tacos tonight while we interview Matt Florentino. <laughs> Welcome to Time on the Water, Tall Tales and Tacos. Oh, I love we're that. Gonna, we're going to talk about <laughs> fish tales, and we're going to talk about what Matt does in the fishing community, which is a whole lot. Well, thank you, Matt, for joining us this beautiful evening. Um, it's nice. It's not cold. And of course, we got food. So let's start. Let's start with this. What's been going on? What's new? What's to come? Well, first off, I'm just happy to be in the neighborhood. <laughs> We're right here off of Imperial La Cienega. I just live down the street, more or less. Um, but yeah, man, just been been busy. It's all you know. For me, it's just full time work. So full time in Africa, just chasing my family around, uh, fishing whenever I can. Fishing and eating tacos. I'm talking earlier, you said ICAST is coming out. Is there new things that are coming that yep. we, we should expect from AFCO? I mean, every year we got something new. Um, this year, uh, we got a few, I mean, we always have a bunch of new clothing. Um, but probably the biggest thing that you guys will see launch this year, uh, we have a new landing net. Uh, so it's all made in the USA. Um, you know, people are accustomed to our, our gaffs, our nets, things like that. You know, something that when we sell an item like that, it's like, you know, people knock our, not they knock our gaffs, but like, hey, your gaffs are so good that you buy one, it'll last you your whole lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the goal with this net. Um, I mean, we, a lot of us fish in the office, so we've all used nets throughout the years. It's one of those things that like, no matter which brand or whatever, um, they're gonna break at some point and they always break at the yoke. So we sought to kind of eliminate those failure points. Um, so it's a really heavy duty built, uh, net it's made out of uh, aircraft grade aluminum. It's got a, it's, it's machined, the yoke itself is machined out of one piece of uh, aluminum. It's just freaking overbuilt. Something, you know, and it's all made in the USA, so bringing back to our heritage of making tackle in the USA, all the components, top to bottom, are made here. Um, lifetime warranty, just, you know, basically we're calling it the last net you ever need. It's called Titan. Oh, um, so now, that's one, one item coming out. Now, I'm not going to say who makes my net. <laughs> But I haven't had it long enough for it to be falling apart like it is. And for how many times I've had to go in and do repair work yep. on it. Like, I'm literally... Like, man, I'm going to have to get some stainless bolts and put some bolts on this because it doesn't... It wants to It wants to come... The two pieces want to come apart. Yeah, it's just one of those things, you know? And like, I haven't had it that long. Yeah. Maybe... I mean, like a year and a half. Yeah. Maybe two at the tops, but if i got to buy a new $180 net every two years, really? Exactly. You know, and that's kind of what we're seeking to at least just eliminate or fix. Now, I don't know how new the honchos are. Are they pretty new? They're new-ish. My, my dad got a pair of honchos. He can't stop talking about <laughs> he, He's like, these are my favorite pair of pants. Like, not just fishing pants, his favorite pair of pants. He's like, I'm going to wear these on the airplane. <laughs> yeah, well, the cool thing about them is like, they're just like pants. They're, you know, they're made for fishing, but you really wear them anywhere. Uh, but, you know, top to bottom of the line, so super deep. Uh, and yeah, with that landing net, the kind of internal joke in the office is, we basically, you know, we're, we're very conservation minded at AFCO, but we almost make everything we, you can make to kill a fish, whether that's a gaff, a flying gaff, or, you know, a bat, whatever, but now we finally have a good landing net. Uh, so that's one thing that we're pushing so hard on. You said something about, I mean, and this is talking from a Start person who doesn't, so you said, you were saying something about a yoke. I don't own a net, so, for anybody who's watching and want, is interested in buying a net, right? And uh, what, what's the yoke? So, a yoke is the connection point from the handle and it connects to the hoop. That's that little centerpiece that connects the, the two, mm -hmm. typically it's two pieces and that holds it all together. Um, some are made with plastic, some are made with different types of metal, you know, things of that nature, but that's always the fail point for most of them, is there on the net. Um, 
or it's the, the lining itself, depending what the material is made out of. Okay. Do we got any new stuff coming out on the big guy line? Ooh. That's what I'm talking about. Uh. I don't know if you guys could tell on video, because, <laughs> but I'm, I'm hefty. We got a few new styles, but we got more coming in the fall. Wait, what, what are you looking for, Luke? I'm, I'm honestly looking for anything I can get my hands on that fits. Like, when whenever AFCO comes out with something in a big guy size, I'm typically buying it. Yeah. Like, one of the few things I haven't got is the Hydronaut pants. Hydronaut pants, I, uh, I tend to not wear slicks, that's the only reason. But I think everything else, I got the Reaper jacket, I got the Hydronaut jacket, I've got the, the big guy sun shirts, the gloves. Yeah, as soon as you guys come out with a size 16 shoe, I'll be buying those. Oh, man. <laughs> like, okay. if, Sha if Shaq wants AFCO, what does he do? Who do I need to talk to? <laughs> <laughs> Would there be bigger size shoe? Like, bigger size? You know, like, it's one of those things where you try to have cater for everybody, but it's tough because as far as, especially when it comes to footwear, the MLQs are so high for those shoes, and you got to go by size by size where if we get enough requests and enough free books from our dealers, then it's something we can make happen. But unfortunately, it's one of those things that like, we have enough volume, yeah, to Well, and, and I'm not, I it. hope this doesn't come off sideways, but like Columbia offers some bigger shoe sizes. Yeah. So it's hard to now make that a competitive market because it's already such a limited market. Yeah, the one thing with, you know, as far as Columbia uh, is the thing with them is They've had footwear in their line for a well, long time. Well, and they're also yeah. like hiking. And yeah, that's thing is it, their, their range as far as the disciplines that they build product to, it's like whether you're climbing yeah. or hiking, they kind of cater to literally where we're very specific to just fishermen. At the end of the day too, I mean, we're, we're a small mom and pop brand. Oh, I mean, AFCO is respected as a big brand, but yeah. we're still pretty, you know, pretty mom and pop in that way. But it's cool the way we operate in that sense. So. That, that's really cool, right? It's still... It's, it's this big name brand that's well known, but it still maintains its like roots. truth, like to the roots, right? Like it's not. We were just talking about taco franchising, right? Yeah. And losing quality, yeah. right? I don't think Afco's lost quality, right? No. And the thing about it is like we're we're big, but we're small enough that we could still like tweak and change things yeah. on the fly, and we're always seeking to like make better products, you know. Whether it's like a zipper placement or a button is off, we're always kind of trying to you know make things better. Cool. All right, let's get into the fishing part, which I think uh, we wanted to talk about. So you're primarily, you're, you're kayaking, as we've seen your recent videos. Um, let's talk about kayaking at yeah. night for the, I know there's a lot of people that watch us that kayak. Um, how are you launching? Where are you launching from? Not like specifically where you're going, but yeah, like- Don't give what's us your, any juice yeah. you don't want to give us. <laughs> I mean, as well as things, for me and kayak, kayak fishing, um, it's something I'm actually still relatively new to. Um, I grew up fishing in boats, most part of my life. But in 2020, COVID started. Um, I was able to work with Hobie, get a kayak and just, you know, just mm. use the thing and get on the water. Um, then I had a lot of fun doing it. So, uh, you know, I took a lot of things that I learned and I did in the skips and in the boats for like years of tournament fishing and just fun fishing, you know, and you got little spots that, mm -hmm. you know, that we would run, you know, kind of do the milk run for our tournaments go. We hit little, little spots, little walls um, up and down California. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because people are like, oh man, that's a long kick to the, to, to the break wall. And it's like, I'm actually not fishing that wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, everybody associates night fishing with the Long Beach break wall. I mean, that's yeah. that's the wall. That's yeah. kind of what put night fishing on the map in a big way. But if you look up and down the coast, every marina has a jetty and has a break wall. And you'd be surprised that, you know, the type of fish that live in some places that you would not think that they're there because people don't ever talk about it. You'd also be surprised at how many places that maybe people have hit and didn't do good on for whatever reason. They're like, there's no fish there. And the dudes in the know go, yeah, you're right. There are no fish there. Well, no, totally. <laughs> don't bother that's, with it. And that's what usually happens. It's like, oh man, I went to, I tried this place or that place. Man, it sucks. I'm like, 
Well, dude, you just hit it on the wrong day, and I guess fishing too. Like, I well, mean, even to go a little further, right? We were just discussing this when we started well, this recent trip that we went on, right? Friday, last last Friday, um, we talked about the style of fishing, right? Like, two people can hit the same place, but maybe my style is presenting a little different than yeah. that other person's style, right? So, no, 100%. You know, you'll get those like, oh, I, I, I didn't do well, and hey, guess what? I I killed it, you know? I've, like, I've talked to, like I've talked about that a lot through the years, and especially fishing tournaments. You know, like, you'd have, like, 60 boats, 40 boats, whatever it might mm. be, and like, oh, man, I, I went with the PV, man, it sucked. But then a cove over, another team or two were there and they had 25 pounds so cool. you know it all comes to just and we all fish different like you said yeah. like um i i, I fish with a lot of people throughout my life and I, I learned quickly that we all have our own style we all have the way we do things you can have the same rods lines reels mm -hmm. baits but you can be putting in places that other people aren't they might be fishing in in one section deeper depth some guy might be shallow so there's so many variables of just yeah. fishing in itself and also like timing you know like the fish could be up on a place you know at one part of sex one part of the tide and then not be two three hours later um and it's all again it's fishing you know there's but nothing's that's consistent. one of the things i'll say it's like i'll i'll come right behind you and fish your water i don't mind because yeah. number one you probably just woke up the fish over there so they're looking <laughs> a little harder like one of the things i say all the time is most of our big fish come off the back of the boat, not the front. I think that front cast wakes them up, and then they hit the second bait. But also, just, you know, I can look at what you're throwing, and it's most likely not going to be what I'm throwing. Yeah. And so, just by the nature of us throwing different things, we're going to be presenting them differently. So, I don't... I, I usually have no problem the same way. I have no problem fishing behind somebody, um, except for my buddy Randy Spicer, because we fished so many yeah. years together that we... Our style is almost like one and like the same this, yeah, yeah, yeah like our approach like it's it's very aggressive and it's very it's similar baits because we spent so much time together and we have certain techniques and baits and things that kind of like follow suit like when we fish tournaments together you know we would take two approaches but it's a similar but different approach because we, we know okay if i'm on the jig and randy's on the crank or whatever we're both fishing kind of whatever strengths are or if it flip-flops you know, or we just, if we're on one bite's happening, and then we'll all shift to that. But we'll all basically be in the same, you yeah. know, really on the same wavelength. Um, but yeah, man, it's like, we all fish so different. It, it, um, it is, it is true. Like, well, like my dad, my, my dad fishes totally different than me. I learned calico fishing from him, um, but his style has changed throughout the years. Where I actually still carry his old style awesome. that he learned back in the day, shallow, you know, big baits, aggressive. Um, you know, me and Randy learned from him a bunch and other people, but, uh, if you go on the boats together, if I run the boat, it's something different than he'd be doing. If he runs a boat, he'd be doing something where I'm like, oh, we probably should be doing this, or yeah, you know, yeah. just the way my mind works. You know, we're, we're family, but we we work, we're, we fish similarly, but we also fish very differently. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, just yeah, a good yeah. example of just, yeah. Yeah. you know, I learned from my father, father and son, but we also we also have two different approaches when it comes to like how we fish. So when you say, and he hates night fishing. Yeah. I love night fishing. Oh, no, there's, <laughs> you'll never find him. There's nothing night ever. like night fishing, right? Like oh, yeah. the fish are more aggressive, even the smaller ones, right? Like there's, there's, but there's also just like the adventure of it. Like, no, totally. Like, like there's a, there's, there's a, there's a legit real danger to it, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's not a perceived danger. It's, it's more dangerous. hundred percent. Like, and the fish are more aggressive. Yep. They're being more dangerous. Like it's, it's just all around. It's, it's cool. And you've seen it. You could go fish a place at night. You could literally catch over 90, 80, hundred bass one night. Go there during the day. It's like, wait, do they really live are here? There, yeah. Are there bass here? And like, I, I was talking actually this earlier today. Um, I have a good buddy, uh, Al, Al, Al Quattarachi. Um, he's a really good saltwater fly fisherman. Um, but we, we just kind of, we share notes here there. He's a really fishy guy. Um, he actually holds the uh, fly world record for Calico and White Sea Bass. Oh, PD. really? Um, what is the fly world record? Uh, it was a nine something, and I think it was on like, I think it was a line re line class record, and don't quote me on it, it was like either 12 or 15. That's pretty cool. He actually, he landed the White Sea Bass line class record and the Calico fly record in the same day off Palos Verdes. Um, he was probably riding high for a week. <laughs> oh, dude, and Al's, Al's a fishy guy, man. But uh, we were talking about that, it's like, dude, like at night, those bigger fish, there's less boat traffic, there's less people on the water. You know, even some of these break walls, the guys that are on there every day with the buckets hammering them, those guys are gone. 
Um, but these fish, bigger fish, you know, it's low light. They're able to kind of move around. I think that's when they're actually hunting is at night. Yeah. Um, and we've always had this theory of like those bigger fish, they are not, during the day, they might be stagnant in their little hole or their cave, but when the nightfall comes, they all go up, they're moving around. They are probably, if, if I, and I have no clue, but in my mind, those fish are kind of patrolling, you know, up and down the rocks, picking off a lobster, picking off a bait fish, you know, anything that, you know, shouldn't be there. I mean, they're the prime territory on the great walls, you know, well, as far as species go. Well, and it's, it's funny. One of the things I always say is, you know, once in a while, like, hey, are you metering fish? It's like, I might not be metering fish right here, but if I back up the boat into this wall, there's fish like just we can all rest assured that every piece of structure and this and all 30 miles of fishable structure in this harbor yeah have fish all over it we just got to find the ones that are hungry we got to find the ones that got some current or whatever magic's happening whatever special ingredients we just got to find those ones but they're all over the place yep. they haven't gone somewhere say you guys really think the fish stay at the wall do you oh, really yeah. think the fish stay at the wall? One hundred percent. Do you think the fish from San Pedro migrate to PB? I don't no? know. I, I mean, I'm no expert. My theory, in my mind, especially those bigger fish, you know, I think they are resident. They live there 365. They may come off the wall to spawn or something, but I think those fish live on those walls. Because number one, you know, the structure there, they could dig into a cave and they're, you know, they're safe. Um, and those fish that are on the wall, if you catch a, a kelp fish, a fish that's in the kelp beds, even a fish that's in a boiler, you know, like off of a reef, shallow, they're built different than some of the fish that are on the wall. There's visually, you know, um, fish that are in the kelp are golden, you get a little different more hue, yep. you know, hues yep. them. The fish that are in the boilers and shallow, they're dark, but they have like almost like a purple to them. But the wallfish, like, it's kind of like, you know, whether it's Long Beach or Marina del Rey or Dana Point or whatever, they're always a little more haggard, you know, yeah. because of where they live, I feel like. That's my theory is they just live there. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, because I could sound like a complete idiot because I'm not a scientist. Exactly. But yeah. a what is it? A marine, marine biologist. A marine biologist. But I think if, if something is migrating, it's those younger, hotter ones that want to go get on those spawns, get in the new areas. I think the older established ones are probably chilling. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of exactly true. Maybe. I will. Well, you know, like I don't think that older eight-pound bass has the opportunity to escape a seal in open water that a fourteen-inch bass has. That's that's my opinion. And, and I think those fish aren't schooling the way the smaller fish are. Yeah. Because you'll see, you will see, like, I've seen aggregations where they're actually spawning, and there's uh -huh. a lot of that, like, three, you know, maybe, like, one to as big as five-pound fish all together. Um, but those bigger fish, I think those are just standalone fish. I, I will say it's different if you go fish the islands. Um, you'll run into wolf packs of, like, yeah. you know, say we're fishing Pyramid in San Clemente Island. You're catching, like, twos and threes, all stoked. Out of nowhere, you get these wolf packs of like five to eight pounders that just rush the boat. Oh yeah, like five to eight pound wolf packs. It, One another two. I'm good. I mean, it, and the islands are different, you know. Like, I, so I think those fish will kind of group up together, you know, as far as size goes, and then just wreak havoc. Where the smaller fish, you know, they'll be in kelp stocks, they'll be suspended. But so I have seen that where there's a bigger grade of fish, but they're all kind of grouped up together. There's not a lot of them, but you know, like. Is this happened like multiple times now, like where that's gone down and yeah, like you'll I've double run, triple up on a six, seven and eight or whatever. I've ran into a couple out here where you'll run into a couple bigger ones, Yeah, but it's rare. It's usually that solo Onesie, twosie. larger one. Yeah, yeah. You got one little guy on and you know, PV yeah. and then a big six or six to eight will kind of follow. Yeah. Um, the yes. island, the island is a different story. That would be insane, right? To see a wolf pack of seven and eight pound calicos. Spend enough time at like Clemente or even Catalina and you know, you, you'll see that stuff go down. What? I might get another couple tacos. If you get another couple tacos, <laughs> I'm gonna get another couple tacos. <laughs> so right now Matt's talking about getting a couple more tacos. I'm, I may go get a couple tacos too if, if I'm not gonna be left out of that kind of action. <laughs> I know, I'll have sure it's kind of fire. And... We gonna get some more tacos? I think so, I'm down. Let's get some more tacos. <laughs> I got it. Okay. What do you want? 
Uh, can I do the store tacos? For here, yes. Um, let me also get two El Pastor with cheese and avocado, please. You want avocado? I'm good. Thanks, Luke. Yeah. Two El Pastor. Avocado. Avocado this time. Good avocado. Yeah, I'm gonna get a. You start with a fresh plate this time, too. So while we wait for those tacos, <laughs> let's talk about. Uh, let's go back to AFCO, how that started for you. Oh, uh, dude. AFCO started in 2013. Uh, so I've been there for over 11 years now. Uh, I really just started, um, you know, my background's in e-commerce and digital marketing. Um, so at that point in time, you know, AFCO, and AFCO is a, is a heritage legacy company, legacy brand, family owned and operated, like you said. Um, but it's always been, at that point in time, it was very, you know, very traditional old school, you know, the way the brand was. So, you know, there was a website, but there really wasn't a website. You know, this is, there was no social media, there was no marketing team. So I was the first guy hired in to kind of get that all, you know, set up uh, from a from a branding standpoint, e-commerce, selling online, and all that. So I, 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 2013 is kind of where things started. Uh, just running the website, getting the branding in place and everything, you know, and fast forward today, you know, I was the first hire for that. And then now we got like a full team, an e-commerce team. We have a brand marketing team, a content team. Um, yeah, and I've just been there basically since then, just, you know, making sure that the brand is one presented well and you know the way that brand the way AFCO is is you know we're not just SoCal you know West Coast we're pretty much you know all over the country so a lot of our business in the southeast just because that's where a lot of fishermen are we're also in freshwater um, as far as bass fishing goes I mean um, so we're kind of our, our tagline is any fish any water you know so whether that's a calico bass whether that's a marlin whether that's a tuna whether that's a, a large old bass, a walleye, a tarpon, you name it, you know, we try to cater with the right products for anglers from anywhere, really, and have products keep them, you know, keep them comfortable, keep them dry, protect from the sun, and all that. Like perfect um, examples, I'm, you know, when I was getting up ready for my last trip from Florida, it's like, let me get on that AFCO site, grab a couple sun shirts. Yeah, yeah especially when you go back east and you deal with the yeah. humidity and all that, like, you really need that stuff. So. Luke went to Florida, and here in here in the West Coast, we tend to wear a lot of black, you know, and yep. we're like, oh yeah, dude, like, like skateboarding, right? Yeah. Style like apparel, and uh, Luke went down to Florida wearing the same thing, and I, I don't think it worked out, right? Well, <laughs> well, for me, that was one of my challenges. You know, I'm a West Coast kid. I mean, dude, I'm LA. I'm an yeah. LA kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I grew up on like skating, hip hop, and like that's that's my culture. That's where I'm from. So when I first started, it was just like. And was the biggest challenge for me was just seeing the bigger, broader scheme of things when it comes to fishing, understanding, you know, what different types of regions, what their style is, what the aesthetic, what the culture is, what they need as fishermen, you know, um, and try to cater to that. And also present the brand, the content, the visuals that's familiar with them. Um, and it's been kind of cool, like, you know, we're from California, but I'm, I'm able to sell products to people, whether they're, you know, ice fishing and Wisconsin, Minnesota, or they're chasing tarpon down in South Florida, or there's guys up in New York chasing striper. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I've had a lot of fun because I'm just a fish, I'm just a fishing nerd. I'm, a, you know, I feel like I'm a student of the game. So, whether that's here in California for bluefin or whatever, I enjoy just learning about all these other fisheries, and you know, also spending some time like being able to travel, experience, you know, what these guys do, and then okay, I understand now. I can then present, you know, the right brand content and also make sure we have the right products of the product team. And as a fisherman, like, hey, like back there, they really need, actually they want no buttons on their on their shorts or on their pants. Why, it's because of the coldness? No, because um, every day they, they don't have a bait receiver like we do, where you could go give the guy 40 bucks and you get a mm. bunch of live bait. Mm. The first thing they do is they got to go make their own bait with the cast net. So if you oh. throw in the cast net over your shoulder and you throw in the cast it net, the it gets caught on the buttons yeah. and things. So very interesting. There's little, but until you go there, hear it from them, you see and experience it, yeah. you won't know. You know, same way if you come, same way if you come here, there's little nuances to how we fish. You know that if they were to come here, they wouldn't understand until they do. Like, oh, okay, yep. now I see why rail rods um, work really well, and yeah. they're you not using. Look at those like we're full coots. Oh no, totally. Because like back there, 
if the rod touches, you know, the gun or the rail, that's not a qualifying fish, you know, from, from as far as a sporting perspective. Like, and stand, either they do stand up fishing or they're fishing like a, like a spinning gear with Stella's jigging popping. Yeah, they don't um, realize that we don't care if it's a qualifying fish. We're trying to no, land this yeah. big old fish and put it in the freezer. You know, and the other aspect for SoCal, the specific to that, is we have a heavy, um, a really heavy ingrained culture with sport boats and that style of fishing. Where back there, that doesn't exist. You go fish with a guide, you fish in a, in a you know, kind of like my dad, you fish with a guy like that. There are head boats, but it's not the same. Do you um, remember though, like being younger and hearing like when rail rods first came up and like people were like, these guys are putting their rods on the rail. What kind of kook puts their rod on the rail? Like oh, yeah. it was sacrilege. Like it was sacrilege when I was younger to put your rod on a rail or to pass a rod. Like yeah. if you got tired on a tuna, oh, no, you were, yeah. you you were weak. Yeah. If you pass it off to someone, like, dude, you're gonna you're gonna keep a fish you didn't even fight yourself. I can see that though. I can I can really I can really see that though, like happening, right? Like it's like it's like borrowing your friend's fish to take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> but so when these big bluefin came in, we had a culture shift on that because they were just so big that there was no it was no longer a fish you could get yourself, and that's when the culture shifted to rail rods and double teaming fish. Something I never experienced. <laughs> but one cool thing, you know, be, like growing up, growing up, AFCO's, I mean, AFCO's been around for a long time, yep. right? But now to see like cool things like the puff jacket, dude, like you could casually wear that, right? Now we got a lot, I mean, like it's it's something that caters to like somebody like me. Son, the puff jacket. <laughs> like, it's we a really cool jacket. You like, you got to pick any jacket out he wanted. And he was like, let me get that puff jacket from AFCO. Like we've came so far from when I first started. We had, you know, the old, the, I was called like the old man stuff. You know, we had like the short shorts, the, yeah, except I would never wear, you know what I mean? Dude, like, Shannon shorts. Shannon shorts. You know what? Okay, but Shannon, <laughs> Shannon was like, shout out to Shannon. He was like, he was like, Charlie, if you, if you get some shorts, you better get some of these shorts. You know, we actually, so, uh, so Shannon, we, we make these original fishing pants, a pants version, and we stopped making them. And he was trying to find them. So we actually got him a couple pairs because we had a couple left over. But Shannon's, one of those few people, um, shout out to Shannon, <laughs> that could pull off like, dude, he's got the yellow Some Crocs, yellow like, orange shirt, but like, you know, shorts. but when you meet him, you talk to him, like, it all makes sense because he's just a, you know, a, he's he's a rad dude, a different dude, dude. Right? and he's fishy though, he gets freaking bit, you know. And he could wear Crocs, yellow Crocs, and he can wear little shorts, he's catching fish, you know. You know, like, they like, like my, my good buddies Randy Spicer and uh, Skylar Catchadorian, like, they can pull off all of our really bright colors and make it look mm -hmm. like dope. Like, cool. Where I wear it, I just look like, I, I just don't look You're right. You're showing off. <laughs> He's showing off the you colors. Know, like, I'm still like the black hat. Like that's just still my Dude, my that's, style. that's, it, it's, it's weird that I'm wearing a gray shirt right now because I'm usually wearing black, but. But yeah, so that was my, that was my issue in Florida. <laughs> I went to Florida all black, which is fine on the boat, but when you're, trekking a couple miles through the Everglades. Oh, dude, yeah, here you cooking. know, shore, shore fishing for peacock and largemouth. Oh, I was like, my buddies were like, do we need to stop? Are you gonna die? And I'm like, stop talking to me. Yeah. And stop, don't look at me. Your drench, <laughs> don't look at me right now. Your drench is wet, you're miserable, and like, I was like, okay, cotton, <laughs> well, no bueno. Like, that's where you need that center. Well, no, it's like, it's like, <laughs> don't, I don't want you to see me like this. Don't look at me. <laughs> that's so funny. No, but going back to, to the, to the to the apparel like like you said right like i i thought of afco like for older men you know and now it like dude it caters to like the more more modern look you know on that and say it's even cutting edge right now i don't think i can't think of another company that's got the high-end apparel that matches well i mean like for us like and again like i said we try to be a little bit of everything for everybody so like we have things that like would fit your style or my style. We have some really, actually have some really dope flannels and like those honcho pants and some other things. But then we'll get the guys from the back east or whatever. But like to your point from like a technical fishing standpoint, like where we really shine is like those things that you wear when you're actually out fishing that'll keep you dry, keep you warm. You know, cause like some stuff that like from like a steez or style standpoint are like dope and look sick or they have rad graphics. But like when you're out actually fishing in the boat, making a channel run, I mean, it won't keep you dry, um, and and then you're just miserable because you're soaking wet. You know, you might look fresh, but you ain't feeling fresh. You know what I mean? Like so. <laughs> just, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. It doesn't give you 100. It's just you know, pure honesty. Because like before before I started working after, like I was wearing um, 
there wasn't a lot of good fishing clothing on the market that would work. So I wore a lot of like, and I, I used to snowboard a bunch. So I used to wear a lot of like snowboard gear. Like mm -hmm. that, it's the same, honestly, it's like the same sort of stuff. It's got a membrane, everything else. Yeah. It just would have like, it wouldn't be built right. Yeah. You know, cause it's made to wear over it your didn't over move boots. right. Exactly. Yeah, um, so my, my boat's really dry. We, we've so, so rarely taken a wave over the bow. And I want to say about two weeks ago, just this one weird position wave as I was turning caught us just right. Dude on the front of the boat got soaked, which never happens. Dude, pull that hydronaut out of my seat. There you go, bro. Put on a fresh jacket. Save the night. I think I look super cool using my Reaper jacket. <laughs> you know, I just love how it looks on me, right? Yeah. But it all, it's also dry for those runs, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Those late night going home runs, you know? <laughs> I know, for huh? The, for the moisture. Yeah, for like when the moisture is in the air, when it's not raining, but as you get up to 20 miles an hour, it feels like it's raining. I'm the mic man now. <laughs> Hello? Yes. How about that big calico? Oh, you decided to have a little early birthday party the other day. Yeah, dude. So, I turned 40, um, which, damn, 40. Damn indeed. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, Friday night. Yeah. Do you remember me, bro? From where? David told me. David, David. Oh, shit. David, what's we up, to, We went to yeah. the park together. Yeah, 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 yeah. How you doing, man? I'm good, bro. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. Um, I saw you when I was there. I was like, David, this motherfucker right there. <laughs> 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 nice. And, and I called fucking David. I'm like, hey, that's like a rocky with a beard. It's like Charlie. I was like, that's that motherfucker. Right in front of me, dog. I know he's here. It's good to see you, dude. Oh, for sure, man. Hey, no, I'm visiting my homie right here. Yeah, but I stay. I stay around. I stay around. Matt, how's it going, bro? How are you? So yeah, pick up where you left off. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming at you. You're like, okay, it's a decent fish. Yeah, so I get bit on the line back, you know, and it's like pretty close to the kayak. Albeit, like I fish pretty tight to the rock, so I'm pretty close still, you know. But um. The fish bit, I'm like, oh, okay, on the wine, I'm like, cool. I'm like, oh, finding it, but I'm, he's kind of swimming at me though, you know, and then I get on both side and you watch the video, I'm like two crank th cranks in, he's already like next to the kayak. And then it wasn't, as, and again, it's like, dude, it's dark out. It's 1.30 in the morning. Um, and over, over there, there's not many lights, period. So I'll click on my headlamp. And then um, and at that point though, he starts digging on me a little bit. And then I get a visual like, oh shoot, this, this is, is a, a freaking good one. And again, uh, I didn't mention it, so I don't have a net. I usually always bring my net with me. Um, oh yeah, that AFCO net we're working on. Hopefully I get one soon. But, uh, but I'm the net, one as soon as they come out. Dude, well dude, the, the net I had broke, of course, and, and I was like, oh yeah, that's why we're making a net. Yeah. So the net I had, I don't have, and I, and I was joking to my wife. I was like, oh shoot, I don't have my net. Tonight's probably the night I get like a, a giant. She's like, of oh, course. you'll be fine. It always happens, right? It always happens you don't life. take what you need and you end up catching a big, a big one, right? Yeah, so I got this thing, you know, just like thrashing around both sides. I'm like, oh God, you know, and I fish heavy, I fish 50. So I just get, a, you know, a wrap on my hand and then I kind of throw them in and then like throw my legs on them just to make sure it doesn't jump out, you know? And I'm just like, then I was like, oh shoot. Okay. Happy it's, birthday to me. Happy birthday, motherfucker. <laughs> like, this is a real one, you know? Um, and I'm like, you know, in my head though, you know, like, I'm excited, but I try to like keep it cool, you know? Um, thankfully, my, my phone was, was filming everything. Um, and I, you know, I wanted so, I, I mean, you know, I'm kind of a trophy hunter guy. So I always like, mm -hmm. I don't care about quantity. It's fun to catch a bunch, but like I, when I'm going out there, you know, and I've caught enough fish now that like, I'm really just seeking those like, those giants, especially at night. You're not, like, I'm not fishing for like a hundred fish. I could literally catch, if I caught one, but it's, it's a, a big one like that, I'm, you know, freaking pumped. So this thing's in the boat and my head, I'm like, this is my 10, this is my 10. I try not to say it, I don't wanna jinx it. I'm like, let me put it on the boga. And I usually, I don't bring a digital scale because I've had it before where I run it, I, the batteries are dead or something weird happens. So um, I use a boga grip. And those things are, you know, their boga grips are kind of a standard, even IGFA. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're certified. Yeah, so um, I put the thing on the boga. You know, it's over, it's over eight, you know, and it's just, it's above nine, but not quite nine and a half. Okay. Nine pounder, it's like nine sick. Pounder. Which, oh, dude, I it's it's can't I, go wrong. I feel spoiled to complain because I was a little disappointed because I oh was, that thing was, dude. So wait, hold on. The eyeballs <laughs> on it, like <laughs> <laughs> I hit up my I hit up Matt, right? I'm like, dude, you know, he's like, yeah, it's a nine pounder. I'm like. 
dude, congratulations. It's like, funny story. I have two more. <laughs> well, it, it's like you said, you feel kind of spoiled to complain yeah. about this, but at the same time, it's what we're chasing. Oh, no, we're, I'm, I'm we're, chasing a, we're chasing a 10, we're chasing 10 pounders. You know, it's that fish of a lifetime that yeah. like, you know, and in my lifetime, I've had some really nice fish and I'm stoked on all those fish, but like, I want that, you know, was, the goal is yeah. to break yeah. your PB and my PB is nine and a half and like half, half a pound short to 10. And so, you know, a little bit of me, I'll do, okay, of course I'm freaking jacked. I'm freaking yeah. stoked, but I'm like, oh shit, like. <laughs> It's close, it's, close. It's, it's weird because you're like because I've I've only caught I haven't caught three nine pounders but I've caught a nine pounder, and you've got that thing where you're like you're stoked, you're stoked out of your mind, yeah. and you're like but it's not a ten but look how big that thing's oh, no, head totally. is this thing's head's like as big as mine oh and like, dude I'm still I'm still so super fortunate like that I caught that fish dude the way that he was built he was a rad freaking fish yeah it was cool you can you can really see the age in them yeah you can really like. And they've got a look in their eye, and they've got like they're a little gnarled. They got that yep. old root kind of look. And those little wallfish, they're built different. Like yeah. I've caught eight pound like flamini fish, and they're just beautiful, golden. Like, yeah. The color is yeah. like gold. They're out of the kelp. Yeah. These you know? wallfish, they look like it's mean, mean, right? Like yeah. jail style fish. You Again, know? LA County, look where we're at. <laughs> yeah. Like they live they're in our, urban. You know what they're I mean? Like, totally. They're under the freeway. Yeah. yeah. Like, and for me though, like that fish specifically. But that's all. Is that your first nine pounder out of the kayak, right? Well, that's the thing. Which I, is I, crazy. So like that's I've had, wild. That's my third nine. You know, my first one was a nine at Catalina, um, with Randy, Randy Spicer. This is shoot 2010 or so. And then my second, which is my PB, was with my dad at Palace Verdes. Um, and you know, but those ones were you know, ran in my eyes. Randy put me on that fish, the first uh -huh. one. My dad put me on the second. The second. This one is me by myself in the middle of the frickin' night in my kayak, you know, especially how rootsy that is. Like that's, I think that's where this, of all the fish I've caught, like my PB means a lot to me, obviously, especially Palos Verdes, cause I love PB and running fish in there, but like to catch one at night. And I've been committed to this like night thing for like the last like four or five years or so. So to finally, you know, I've, I've kind of, every year I've kind of edged up like, getting my first five and getting a six and then a seven and then an eight and now having a nine. It's a different, it's a different experience, right? You're alone. You put yourself on that fish. Yeah. Right. So it, it makes it a little bit more special. Oh man. Yeah. Especially, you know, those factors, plus it's my freaking birthday, you know, it's like, you know, that's, you know, and my wife's like, what do you want for your birthday? I was like, you know, I'm, and I'm a pretty simple guy. Like, I don't need anything, you know, like also I just want to go fishing and to catch a fish like that. Like yeah. I was like super stoked, super stoked, you know? And then, you know, I, got my pictures in the video and then I released the fish and I, I literally took like another like 10, 15 minutes to just like freaking decompress. I was just floating out there like, dude. And then I was like, do I, do I just go in right now and call it? And just like, so that was my next question. Like, did you call it after that or did you continue to fish? You know, I was going to call it and I was like, nah, like that dude, 10 pounders if, probably. If there's one here, there might be more, you know, in my head. Um, but I got into a little bite after that. So like, um, I kept fishing and it was a good drift. Like, I didn't really need to pedal too much, you know, in, you guys in the boat, you get in that little sweet spot on the wall where it kind of reverts back, it keeps it right in that little sweet spot. Yeah. I think and we then the current, like, we were like that on Friday, huh? It wasn't like minimal, like we were drifting pretty cool. I'm trying to remember if I had, I'm trying to remember if I had the trolling motor on because I think Saturday could. was so wild that it's kind of overshadowed Friday for me because we caught like almost a hundred fish on Saturday, but I'm pretty, if I remember right, I think we might have had the trolling motor mm -hmm. on, moving us kind of fast. Yeah. It was like, the bite was like, normally you want to slow down. Yeah. The bite wanted us physically fishing slower, but we were moving yep. fast covering water, but yep. we were only covering like 10 feet, then reeling up and getting back out there. Yeah, I was, so there was a really good drift and I was just, I had the same deal. Well, I was kind of moving actually faster than I like, but I was actually covering water. Yeah. And then I was just like kind of power fishing the jig. And then, oh, there's one, you know, oh, there's one. And then um, I got, you know, nothing big, but I, I think for the night I got, you know, nothing crazy. Maybe caught like nine to 10 fish, but you know, I caught another. Which is great in the cryo. It's funny, dude, like I got one after then, it was like a four and a half. I was like, oh, that's a little guy. But I'm like, oh wait, because I just got a nine pounder, like a four just look like, you know, like nothing. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh wait, dude. And I, I, I just to check myself, I waited. I was like, oh, that's a four and a half. One of the like, times, we, one of the times <laughs> we've been out fishing, it's funny because, you know, and, and, and Luke, Luke puts it well, right? I mean, before I, a fish, a two pound fish was, oh my God, it's a big fish. Yeah, right? this fish is insane. This fish is so big. The first time I took him, 
the, the first time I took him calico fishing, I think he got like a 16 inch calico. And like, I watched his brain melt. He was like, oh my God, let me get out the scale. I was like, you need a bigger fish than that before we break out the scale. And so now he'll go like, oh, it's just a little guy. And I'll look at him and go, hey, remember when that was like, you wanted to get out the scale? <laughs> That's cool, the man. That's all progression, you know? Like, and, and that's the, and, and even, even like to take it a little further, right? Like night fishing was just like insane, right? Yeah. It's, it's a whole different, it's a whole different. So for you to catch your nine pound on a kayak at night, extra special. A hundred percent, man. Yeah. Like that's one fish I'll never forget. And like my buddy's like, you'll never be able to do that ever again. Well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> What if you, th what, when you catch that 10 pounder, it's gonna, it's gonna supersede anything. Oh, no, for sure. Right? Yeah, if and when, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm modest though. Like, if it happens, cool. If not, I mean, I've, I've caught enough fish though in my life to like be stuck with. Funny thing though for me is like, and I always kind of like, I'll joke about it with like my dad or my buddies is like, you know, like I'll get to travel and do some really cool things for work or do whatever else. And, but dude, at the end of the day, I wanna go, just go, go catch calicos. Yeah. Like, I'm such, I'm so obsessed. And so committed to like that style of fishing and the fishery. And I've caught, I don't know how many fish I caught in my life. I caught a lot of calicos, but like it's still for me is like, that's the fish I want to chase. That's like what, you know, keeps me up at night, you know, and kind of really drives me as an angler. It's just those calico bass. What, what's pretty cool to hear is I actually I hear a lot of guys who've been down to San Felipe Bay, they say, once you get on these grouper, oh. you don't even want to go back and fish calico fishing. And I know you've been on them, but here you are talking about <laughs> well, calico. No, I love, dude, Korea, I, I always say, dude, if we had those fish, that's what I would fish for. But, yeah. but it's, you know, so when you go down there, dude, they do ruin you, though. Like, when I, first couple of times I went you, you down. You have to take a little while before you get back on the calico. When I went back and I caught my first, you know, we went to this 2015. We went down, down there and did the whole Korea thing. And, dude, we smoked them. You know, I, the first time I went down there, I caught a 24-pounder. Um, which that still is like that pinnacle fish for Cabrilla is over 20. Yeah. Um, you know, it's I, like our 10 pounder. Right? 20 pounds. Dude, I've got two. <laughs> so, out, of, out of how many trips? I haven't, I've only gone four times. But I will say though, it's easier, not that it's easier to catch a 20, but then, and a lot more people are going down to Bay of LA or what have you. So uh, you're seeing a lot of those fish getting caught now, where before, like it's now becoming a destination to go down there and fish Cabrilla. Yeah, I'm for, going this year. I, I, for for I, many I, years, guys go down there and just go fish yellows, but the Cabrilla thing was kind of low key. I have like, a, and I, I, that's my next question, right? Like, do you feel that social media had a lot to do with Cabrilla fishing? No, I, you know, honestly, like we, I feel guilty a little bit. In 2015, <laughs> when we put that first AFCO video out, um, the uh, Viaje a la Reina, like, Dude, like that, nobody had ever like put media out about those fish like that. And then we also did another piece a few years later, you know, and then we threw up story, you know, all this content with that fishery. Um, we were the first ones to go do it. Like dude, talk to Mark at um, Performance. They've been going down there for years. But just like, again, social media though, you just, unless you knew somebody or talked to somebody that went and did it, you didn't even know that exists. Yeah. Um, and we talk about San Felipe fishing, Bay of LA, you know, I would say your traditional fishermen, you know, the guys are going in just to load up on, on, you know, on meat, to be honest. They're going down to catch yellows. Yeah. They weren't going down to catch Cabrilla, but they weren't calico nerds like we are, you know, like yeah. fishing artificials and all that. Um, but yeah, dude, when you go down there and you catch those fish, the first bite, like they're like, dude, just watch. The first one, it's going to ruin you. And I had like an eight foot, um, like calico set up with like, what was I fishing? A, uh, a Revo NACL 50. And uh, dude, I just, my first one I hooked, it wasn't even big. It was like a four pounder. Yeah. And I just like, I couldn't, I got my rod is just freaking folded over. I was Yeah, like, Mark was hold. telling me a four pound Capri is gonna fight way harder than a four pound Calico. And my guys know, oh, you gotta fish 80 pound, 100 braid, and we fish titanium wire. I was like, dude, are you sure? Like, dude, the fish yeah. isn't that big. But then the first one he hooked to like, okay, it's different. I didn't fish that rod the rest of the time. And I fished my heavy, like, I think I had like a Calstar. 800, eight, um, 800M and some really heavy stuff and lower gear ratio because like. So wait, what, what gear ratio? Like what's. Like a five to one? I was just a five to one or at that point in time one. because I, they had a five to one. And I was just getting to a point where I would hook some of these fish, but like I try to turn the handle, but on a seven to one, you know, you don't have yeah. the torque to get that first turn. You really need to get that first turn on them and then you kind of got them. Well, it's funny because I'm actually a little nervous because I've been like building out my rods for this trip. And when I get Calico reels, guys would be like oh you get you get these high speed reels don't you want don't you want that that torque and that leverage i'm like it's calico i don't like i don't need that torque and that leverage but now i'm like 
oh, this is what I'm bringing down there. Yeah. You know, like, as far as gear rate, I've never been a high speed guy. I've always been like a six, six of ones. Like, uh -huh. that's, that's your height? Because I fish pretty fast already. Yeah. So, like, if I can, a seven to, one, seven to one is probably the highest I'll go. Um, but you're, 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 you're at six to one. I like, so I fish a lot of pens, and the pen Fathom 400 is a six, six to one. Mm -hmm. And then the pen Fathom 300 is a seven, three to one. Yeah, I'm like, if I can get a nine to one, that's what I want. Yeah, yeah, but I like, want to take one crank and get that thing out. <laughs> but no I, fun. I just fish so fast that like, with a six to one, I could slow down if I need to, or I could just fish speed up if yeah. I have to. And especially going down there though, like, I like that lower gear ratio. But you know, like Jerry Mayhew, dude, Jerry's probably one of the most experienced guys doing that Cabrita stuff for like, since like the late '80s. And he likes the high speed Daiwa stuff, uh -huh. you know. But and he likes an eight six, you know, an eight six rod. Yeah. But again, though, like saying how we all fish different, we're all different. Yeah, types. yeah. You know, Jerry's a bigger guy, you know, and he has a certain style that he likes. I'm a smaller guy, so if I'm fishing eight six, dude, the geometry on that, the physics yeah. of that, it just doesn't work in my favor. Yeah. So I like a seven six. I actually have yeah. a, a specific rod I fish. Um, it's a Phoenix seven six heavy, custom wrapped at Performance Tackle. Um, Randy put me on that rod. Uh, Randy calls it the, the Cabrilla Killer. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Um, <laughs> my, my rod says Cabrilla Killer on it. Yep. <laughs> so I, I did a, I haven't used them yet, but I've got a, what is it, an eight foot nine built out? Yeah. And then a 710. Yeah. The one Cabrilla Killer. What is it? The green? The Cabrilla like green, Killer green, and the green, Conquistador. The Conquistador? <laughs> but yeah, dude, those fish are so fun down there. And like, yeah, I've only been with four times, but every only time. four. And every, every time's different. You know, only four, huh? <laughs> the, the first time we went, the coast was like we didn't, we didn't even, we never experienced the uh, the island yet. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Lagardia, Isla Angel de Lagardia, that's what it's called. Um, and that place is freaking Jurassic Park. But we just fished the coast and we wrecked them on the coast. Um, the last a couple times we went, the coast didn't bite that good. Um, but the island, if you could get over to the island, which most of like, especially we're going on the um, uh, Tony Reyes, they yeah. hit all the islands, but. The one further south, and they'll go past the Guardia, but the Guardia is yeah. the spot. Did you do any vertical jigging out there? We didn't. No, we're just like, when we go. We bring our own boats, uh -huh. so we just fish like a fish calicos. Yeah, you know, tight, shallow. Oh, so you guys, you guys had the your your own boat. Yeah, last time I went, um, Randy Randy brought his boat down there, and he and actually your was, dad had a boat down there too. Yeah, right? my dad did a Bay of Olay thing, but um, last time I went was with Randy. Randy and Skyler had been down there for actually two and a half weeks. Duck out and go to Mexico for like, I was like, dude, you guys like, how's your Spanish? You basically should be like straight, like, Yeah, you know, like, talking like locals now. Full, you guys should be speaking full <laughs> sentences in Spanish. So, Luke's your trip got canceled last November, last November, right? Yeah, because of the wind. Because of the wind. You can always expect wind there, which, and you can't ever, for you know, you'd never trust a forecast down there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we had three days of wind and then one window to go. And we sent it, you know, to the island and to right off the back. Cause Randy was, Randy and them had been there so long. They had to kind of dial like, Hey dude, this stretch has been where we've been getting all of them. We went straight there. And then, yeah, first couple of casts in like a 16 pounder, 18 pounder, you know, and then Skylar had like a golden, um, this is like the first 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that golden. So, so what do you do on those three days where you, <laughs> that light, <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do you do on those three days where you got nothing going on? Just eating tacos all day, getting well, your gear ready. The cool thing is like where we camp out at, um, there's a little bay on the inside. So it's protected. And in there you could go catch spotties, Corvina, you know, it's still Baja. So like, dude, you were like, you could, um, just like the tide swings are so gnarly, you walk and fish. Were you eating some spotties down there? We didn't eat spotties, but dude, uh, but like uh, the spotties are bait down there. But dude, it, um, the locals down there, you could trade them out, um, trade them out like yellowtail fish for scallops. Dude, the scallops down there, I'll be like scallops. Oh I my do. god, the scallops down there so, are amazing. You said they were using spot. What are they using spotties for? As Lot, for the grouper? It'll be the grouper. Yeah, it's tough to make bait down there, but you could always catch a bunch of spotties typically. Um, I'll use small yellowtail. You catch a lot of like rat, like six to four to six pound yellows, or they got these um, the bonita, the bonita, whatever they're called, where they have the spots on the bellies. Those are another good bait. But um, but yeah. So the the three days is windy. It's still baja. You're still beautiful, and you could find something to do. You know, go down some random dirt road, or go to some beaches, or just you know, or if you get a little window, but hey, the weather's not bad. Well, for us, though, we have a boat, so like, hey, if it's not that bad, we'll drop the boat in and go out. Yeah. You can go fish off the point or, you know, you can still catch some fish around there. Very interesting. Um, yeah, man, Baja is another deal. 
I've been wanting to take the ride down there just to drive down there, you know, just to check it out. Dude, like, pass, go through. Charlie's a short pounder at heart, so he's going down there just to short pound. pound. No, like, <laughs> hey, but not even joking, though. Like, if you were just to go short pound, like, go, uh, you know, go through, go through uh, Mexicali, you know, you get past, get on the five, past San Felipe. There's a lot of little, like, dirt roads you could go. There's, like, a lot of camp spots. I think Ray Sharifi just posted something recently about how he, like, broke his PD shore pounding Cabrilla. No, you... Like, hit a, I think he hit a 20-pounder from shore. Every time we get down there, like, it was kind of messed up. The first time we went down there, the guys were setting up camp, and me and Spicer just, like, booked it on, you know, to go hit hit, hit the bank. And then we caught, like, yeah, Cabrilla and some Grace Bees. But, dude, if you, if you literally, like... Want to just go on a little adventure that's low cost and go short pound or whatever? Um, I'll, I'll show you some spots. Actually. That would be that Dude. would be sick. And right? you could catch like, you could catch these. Um, they got really nice uh, a corvina down there, but like bigger ones. And you get they got those sea bass, and then you got the the rear trigger fish. Are you saying corvina with the venus, like venus with, with the them yeah, teeth. with the little vampire teeth? Yeah, but they got bigger ones down I'll there. I'll go do that with you, Charlie. My no, Spanish listen. is really being. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, like, and just for you, it's just for you, Charlie. If you go on YouTube and just look up, um, like, I, why just Charlie? I'll go with you. <laughs> no, but like, check out on the YouTube. There's these guys like um down from Ensenada, but they travel around YouTuber guys from that are like uh, Mexican dudes. But dude, they got some dope content. They, and you and you speak Spanish, you can understand. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen them. And they're fishing from rocks. I'll send you some links. So How come only he can understand? What is this? What? There's no, there's no subtitles. So Bro, I get it. Yeah. I, but you can watch. Sh- Luke, Luke speaks Spanish. <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, do you? <laughs> Say something. <laughs> Muy bien. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think I've seen some some content. And Dude, there's just rad guys that fish their kayaks, and they all go as a crew. And they'll fish the kayaks, also they'll, they'll shore pound um, yeah. off of like these volcanic rocks. I guarantee rocks. I'm gonna watch that, it's fake Spanish. It's fake Spanish, he's always saying it's, it's fake Spanish. I think I've seen some stuff like Dude. that. And then there's, ma- there's these mainland, now I'm just geeking out, these mainland guys that fish off of Sinaloa, like uh, 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 Topolo Bampos and some other areas down there, or um, it's the other spot. Ooh, now you're going like uh, deep into Mexico. You're not going to Sinaloa. <laughs> Port- oh, like, like, oh like, like, like Puerto Panasco and like... <laughs> he's going like deep. Hey dude, like, but like, I, but like, so like, I, I went... Get- you know, because everybody knows Bay of LA, but dude, there's a lot of spots you can catch those yeah, fish. Of course, yeah, and of we course. see where one of the and I can see that, right? I went, I went to East Cape as a kid. I want to go back there. There's some on, on mainland. There's some actually really dope. I talked to some guys that are from um, Los Mochis. Hey, you're, you're just trying to ho- fish, right? You're, you're, you're instant homies, you know. Yeah. And then they like they realize you like to fish, and you just trade, you know, just stories. just trade trade yeah. story stuff and the eight hey, like because they all fish too, the same thing, but. What they do is areas that nobody knows about. They fish in these, in the, you know, in the harbors in there. They'll catch these like 80 pound sea bass and stuff in the harbors. So just like you're fishing docks for spotties, like except black sea bass? no, like or, um, sea bass? the um, it's its own thing. It's uh, gosh, I've drawn a blank, and I know that they're um, they're endangered and they're protected, but they get freaking big ones, and they get big um, big uh, kubera snapper and stuff, mm-hmm. like, and these guys are all just like literally short bounding, like. Makes you think, like, what would our fisheries be if, like, you know, if they didn't get that. hammered throughout the years? Yeah. Do that. I, I just, I was just in a big conversation with some buddies of mine today about, like, what if we had slot limits out here? What would this fishery look like? Like, what if you had to have a big net on your boat? And if you caught, you didn't gaff your yellow, but you netted your yellow. And if it was over X amount of inches, that stayed here. And that was something we can recatch. Dude, I would love to see a slot limit. I would love it. I would. Um, the worst thing, or the hardest thing to get that enacted and put in place is that um, California's management of the fishery. Um, and <laughs> for them to add that in there, and also educating the anglers and anglers actually to know how to, you know, utilize a slot limit. Uh, just yeah, gonna, It's going to take some time. I- I, I have so much confidence in how smart all these fishermen are that I just know they can utilize it. Yeah. Well, it, our fishery can be good, right? Our like, fish, it's our not fishery a, is a shadow of what it yeah. was. Hey, because if, like, you, if hey, you, hey, me and you should have yellowtail locally. By how many trips we've ran and we don't have a local yellowtail? That's an overfish. That's we, overfishing. Um, back when I grew up, you know, in like the '80s, '90s, like. The yellow is coming in Rocky Point was a standard my, my deal. Dad, my dad yeah. caught him off Redondo. Yeah, my but, first my first yellow was off but, Redondo. Yeah. But that be, so we've seen the yellow just. But my dad talks about how he's never caught calico like he catches it. I, honestly, I think the calico fishing 
it's it's better. Kind of it's pretty dang good. Back. Like, we've had some like really insane days. Okay, so we're talking about Baja and all that. What do you, what do you got coming up next? You got anything you wanna you wanna tell us about or? We just keep watching you on Instagram. See, see, see what part of the world you're trotting yeah, around in around. next. Well, as far as what I got going next, I'll be, you know, got ICAST like we talked about. That's in July. As far as fishing goes, I really don't have any plans. Like for me though, like, dude, I really don't get out as much as I'd like to. So, you know, I'll obviously do the kayak thing at night, but I really, for me, just going out fishing with my, my, my friends, that's what I'm looking forward to do. Like go fish with Randy and, you know, and my dad or, you know, all the boys, you know, Lane and those guys, I have a lot of fun just fishing with, you know, the homies that way, you know, where um, just going out and having fun, ultimately. That's it, what I'm looking forward to. It's it's definitely always a vibe when you're around good people, right? Like, I'm pretty sure it felt amazing to catch that nine pounder. <laughs> yeah. But I think it would have been, like, amplified if you would have been around a lot of cool dudes. Oh, know? yeah, like, if it, was, if it was my boy, if our boys, we'd all be freaking out, you know, we're all like, oh, my boys. I'm just like a guy floating around in the ocean, like losing my mind, and you know, like I'm sure somebody might be like, "What the hell was that?" You know, like I don't know. on on my nine and my three eights that I've caught, I Facetime my dad on all three of them, and he just knows. He like if he gets a Facetime from me in the middle how of the night, he wakes up and is like, "How big is it?" I'm like, ah! you know, I, I thought about that, like to my dad or those guys. Dude, you should have totally but, done like, that. Dude, my dad was like, so he's the, he's the guy who's like sleeping at like eight thirty, and yeah. he's he's gonna so, wake up at three. So but, my dad. But I texted him because I I got so I fished at like three thirty, and I got home at like three forty. But I knew they, he even he was supposed to go to Clemente with my buddy Ron Matro. And I was like, okay, these guys are probably waking up. So I sent the like, hope you guys get a Clemente. I got a nine. I just got a nine. <laughs> <laughs> just to, like, you know, not to be a jerk, but like, if it was slow, like, oh, we should have just stayed like in the backyard. But no, they had a good day, but Ron was all hyped. And then Lane and those guys were out there too. And they were like, oh, I got a nine. It was, it was pretty rad. They texted me like the next day. Yeah, so. it's, it's, uh, it's always cool to share something like that, right? Like I'm always hitting up Luke the next day after his trip. And I'm like, how was it? Well, yeah. how was it? How, yeah. How'd you do? Yeah, like Randy, like, so like, Randy's one of my best friends. Like we spent a lot of time together, fish together. And you know, we trade notes and everything else. And he, his kicker's actually up to from AFCO. So I, I swing by there a lot. But he's like, he's never caught a fish overnight. The dude's caught multiple 30 pound bags a ton of eights, big fish, done it, seen it all, but he's never got one over nine. And, you know, I was like, dude, I was like, oh, they got a nice one, but it's not, you know, didn't be my PP. He's like, hey, at least you got a nine. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, my bad, oh, my bad. Randy, if you're watching this, you're gonna catch a nine. Dude, no, like, <laughs> you're gonna no, catch and his a style nine. is like, he'll probably, uh, he'll probably won't do nine, he'll go to like 12 or 13. <laughs> like, that's how he rolls. We'll, like, we'll be stoked, record. we'll be stoked yeah. to see it. But, um, if you stuck around this long, um, Thank you guys, we appreciate it. Uh, it really means a lot. You don't have to like, you don't have to subscribe. That's up to you, just, you know, whatever feels natural. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and for me, just dude, thanks for the invite, to be dude. the first one and all yeah. that. I mean, we're here in beautiful, you know, Imperial. Under Siena the Island. 105, but in, under the 105 freeway. And it's, it's a beautiful evening, right? a little cloudy now, but we started off with a beautiful evening. Welcome to this uh, episode of tacos and tails <laughs> <laughs> all right man we're gonna take it out with this matt thank you very much we appreciate you coming out joining us for some tacos here in um tacos tamix tamix tamix, tamix. Oh, tacos tamix the trompo fire pastor you watch you watch the video if you watch the video you'll see i'm cutting in the beginning but matt thank you again man we appreciate it, it. um and guys, again, thank you guys for the support, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.